In this video, I'm going to show you five amazing examples of using the VBA split function. So let's go ahead and get started. In our first example, we are going to take this full file name and extract the name part from it. First of all, we declare our array, which will store the result from the split function. When we call split, we pass a string and a delimiter as parameters to the split function. In this case, our delimiter is the full stop. This will create an array of two parts, as you can see here. Now we're going to take the first part of the array and do another split. This time we are splitting by path separator, which is more commonly known as the backslash. The file name is in the last part of the array, so we use the ubound function to give us that position. When we run the code, you can see that it printed out the basic file name as expected. In this example, we're going to use split to reverse all the words in a string. The result will look like this. The first thing that we do is to split the string by spaces into an array. We then declare a second array which will hold the reversed array. Redeem is used to set the size of this array to match the size of the first array. Now we read through the first array and place each item in the second array starting at the last position and working backwards. We use ubound minus one to give us the reverse position in the second array. Now we have an array with the words in reverse order. We use join to convert this array back to a string which we will print to the immediate window. When we run this code you can see the original string and you can also see the new string below it with the words in reverse order. In this example we've got a sequence of numbers and we're going to take a number from the third position and we're going to add one to that value so our final sequence of numbers looks like this. The first thing that we do is to split the string by the full stop as this will give us the individual numbers. We use the split function just like before, but this time we're using the full stop as the delimiter. Once we have the array of numbers, we can pick the number that we want and then add one to that number. Then we use join to convert the array of numbers back to a string. Now when we run the code, you can see that the new string has one added to the third number. In this example, we're going to create a function that counts the number of words in a string. So in this case, we will get back the result 5. In this example, we will create a function that counts the number of words in a string. We will use that function in our debug print statement. We call our function count items. It takes a string of text and a delimiter as parameters, which we'll be passing on to the split function. We declare our array as normal and split the string to the array using the parameters. We declare array size to hold the size of the array and then we use ubound plus one to give us that size. We then return the result from the function. Going back to our main sub, we use the count items function in our debug print line, and we simply pass it our string and the comma as the delimiter. When we run the code, you can see that the result is five. We can make the count items function much more compact by putting everything on one line. Now we run the code, and you can see that the result is correct, but the code is much neater. In this example, we are going to write the items from a string to a range of cells on a worksheet. We first of all split the array to a string as normal. Then we assign the array to the range. This will write it to the worksheet. We need the range to have a cell for each item in the array, and we use the resize function to do this. We set row size to one as the array is one row, and column size is the number of items in the array. We use ubound plus one for this. We then run the code, and you can see that it wrote out the items to the worksheet as expected. If we want to write the array to a column instead of a row, we can use the worksheet transpose function to convert the columns to rows. We also need to change the resize parameters so that they have multiple rows, but only one column. We then set the starting row to A3, and now when we run the code, you can see that the array was written to column A, starting at cell A3. If you enjoyed this video then please click on the like button and if you'd like to see more of my videos then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. Hope to see you on the next video.